Welcome back. The Fed is stepping in to try and keep the markets liquid during this global rout. And the central bank here is boosting the size of its short-term lending operations as bond yields touch new record lows. When we look at all this, you can see there we're now at 0.51%. Uh, joining us now to discuss uh, from the CBOE in Chicago is Alan Nuckman, Chief Market Strategist at Agora Financial. Uh, and Alan, right now, uh, a lot's being made about the Fed boosting its repo operations here. And we think about the financial plumbing. Right. That's there to kind of keep everyone in the financial sector, uh, I guess, prepared to deal with all of this. What's your take on what we're seeing out of the Fed so far? Well, it's not new. It's been happening for many, many months. It was a headline uh, here just uh, in January. They were pumping, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars into the system, which it's not a liquidity crisis uh, that we're having right now. Um, and you're seeing, you know, obviously the surprise rate cut. The markets didn't think it was a price. The markets had priced that in, and the markets coming in today priced in another half percent cut uh, by that uh, by that March meeting. So that'll bring us down to, you know, half a percent. And if you look further out, look out to the, you know, by December, they're, they're forecasting that uh, interest rates will be at zero. Now, I don't know how much help that is uh, in this particular situation. Like I said, it's not a liquidity issue. Getting more money sloshing around, you know, isn't isn't going to be the solution for this particular problem. But they have certain levers that they can pull. The repo market's one. The tax cut way back when was another one to stimulate the economy. Yep. Uh, but the latest has been the decline in the dollar, the destruction of the dollar. I always say be careful what you wish for. And this is the first administration I've heard in my lifetime. I've been doing this 30 years. Uh, that's ever said that they wanted the dollar lower, guess what? The dollar's now lower, so there are ramific ramifications to deal with that. Hey, it's Brian Chung here, so let's drill a little bit deeper on the dollar. It seems like during times of worry, people have been paying attention really closely to that FRI, FRAOIS spread. Just looking at where the dollar is going and what the demand looks like right now as people maybe run towards just holding and hoarding dollars, especially with yields this low. I'm wondering, have you been paying attention to that? What else have you been seeing in dollar dynamics that tells you a little bit what the risk aversion looks like? among investors right now? Well, the dollar index itself is a basket of currencies. So there's been a race to the bottom in all the currencies, you know, globally. Uh, but it's been a unique situation where the dollar index in the last couple of years, uh, you would think would go down with continued interest rate cuts and, you know, forecasts that uh, the administration wants negative rates. But that didn't happen until just recently. In the last couple of weeks, it finally turned over. It, it uh, fell about 400, 500 points. Uh, and actually, after making uh, multi-year highs, it made one-year lows. So that's another perceived stimulus to support the economy. Let's remember that this administration says they're, and they will, do anything possible to support the stock market because it's so important to re-election. Uh, so don't be surprised. There's always price uh, pop potential here that they could come out with another, and they're meeting right now, to come out with some ideas that could be supportive of the stock market and get the stock market going. But at these low re yields, think about it. If if the 10-year Treasury yield is at half a percent, compare that to any S&P stock. Any S&P stock is going to have a better yield than that. So at some point, people are going to realize that, and uh, money will flow back into the stock market just because of that yield chase. That's a very good point. I mean, even when we were talking about Darden restaurants uh, the other day, it yielded about 4%. Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those stocks that's been hit hard because we're talking about people maybe not going out, which is one of those questions, right. again, when we talk about all the stimulus measures that could be put in place, I'm not sure whether or not uh, the payroll tax uh, that's being discussed here or other things like that might actually get people out spending money if they're already fearful of going out anyways. But when you look at, at some of the other market indicators here, we're looking at gold prices as well, sliding back from its highs, right. back below $1,700 an ounce. So what are you making of that move in gold when we're thinking about the flight to safety and what investors might be thinking about when we look there? Well, number one, I'm a trader. I like to see these markets move. Now, we saw epic moves, and w what we've seen here is stabilization since the open. I can't stress enough how orderly and quiet and controlled the markets were. There was, there was no, uh, I'm not going to use the P word, there, were, there was no emotional buying or selling. Uh, it was very limited. Uh, and, and the markets perform their function, we saw with the circuit breakers. That's why they're there, so people can gather their thoughts and not react uh, to, what, to, to what's going on. Um, so that was very important. But let's talk about where we are since then. We've had 
the VIX go down. The VIX now is at the same level it was on Friday's peak. So that's that's a positive. Gold's Alan. come off its highs significantly. We've seen Treasury yields, uh, you know, uh, bounce off their lows. And we've seen the stock market not test those opening lows since. So right. uh, a lot of positive signs of stability to start with right now. It's important to see how we close. We closed on a positive on Friday. Let's remember, we closed positive last week with all that wildness. Uh, so let's see how we finish today. Right now, being down 5%, you know, it is not a Alan. catastrophic move. Alan, quickly on that point, you mentioned the VIX. So, I mean, have you also been watching the derivatives, the VVIX, the T? VIX, what is that telling you about whether or not we're reaching the high for that volatility or if it's only just beginning? Well, I'm not a quant, so I'm not trying to be the smart guy. I'm trying to look at things more on a weekly basis. I look at the big picture, and the fact is last week we made new point records in the Dow. And again, the Dow is only 30 stocks. New daily point records twice last week. We finished positive on a weekly basis. So I try and look bigger picture. Let's see if this how this market sorts itself out after making new relative lows, where we stand in a couple of days. And like I said, do not be surprised what you get out of Washington, D.C. They're going to do anything and everything. Capital gains cut, uh, payroll tax cut possibly some sort of stimulus where people are encouraged to put money, to put stocks in their 401k and their IRAs. Anything's on the table. They will do anything to support the stock market. I am not going to disagree with you based on the moves that we've seen so far that, that everything is on the table here. Uh, but just one last question before we let you go when it comes to the VIX. There were reports that the CBOE was initially unable to open VIX options trading this morning due to an absence of liquidity from market makers. Just curious to see uh, if you saw any of that, what your take is on liquidity issues, uh, what you're hearing down there. I don't see any liquidity issues at all. And the beauty of a market like the VIX or, or the, uh, the S&P over, over in the corner here is that they have redundancy. They have the electronic version and they have the open outcry version. So you've got all our bases covered. That's the beauty of the marketplace this way, This the, you, know, the, you know, now as opposed to when I was a young little trader, um, that you've got all of this liquidity and you've got the, the ability with these electronic markets to, to manage all that order flow. So you're not, you're not uh, worried about human uh, actions on this, that uh, we're able to digest all the buyers and sellers at one time and yep. give us that price discovery, and that's the beauty of the markets. Opportunity. There's always opportunity. It doesn't matter if the market's moving up or down. There's always money to be made. And we're going to be talking about that much more later on in the show. But for now, Alan Nuckman, thank you so much for joining us to break all that down. Appreciate you taking the thank time. Thank you. Next on Wi-Fi PM, though, how the White House is looking to respond to the coronavirus outbreak. Why President Trump's continuing downplaying of the seriousness of the situation has some, even in his own camp, up in arms. More on that right after this.